Hello, fellow flight simmers. Welcome to X Plane 11 and uh, Bush Flying 101.5. I'm going to take this beaver that is hiding outside the bushes out to a reservoir called Stampede Reservoir. It's sitting just outside of uh, Reno, Nevada. It's actually across the border into California. And uh, I'm going to kind of recreate a small flight that uh, uh, Trent Palmer and some of his uh, bush flying friends did. Um, and uh, that's what I based this video on. Um, I'm going to do it a little bit different because I'm going to fly something much bigger than they are doing. I'm going to play uh, fly this uh, large de Havilland beaver. And I'm not going to start where he started uh, in his video. He started flying from uh, Reno Stead. I'm going to start right here. And this is his own private ranch, his, uh, his uh, own airfield. Um, I've kind of recreated it uh, based on uh, the satellite photo that I found of it. I think his place is very much more finished than this is. Uh, but I kind of created the flavor of uh, something being built. So this is a tiny little strip just outside of Reno. Um, I'm going to try a couple of landings here before I leave. And uh, the plan is... Let's see if I can pull off the map here. To depart uh, the place where uh, this place is. Uh, I haven't put this exact, uh, exactly correct because uh, I don't want to reveal where he actually lives. You could probably find out, but it's I don't want to do that. Uh, south, I'm going to depart south to Reno Stead, uh, where the weather is currently cold, clear, and calm winds and uh, high pressure. So that's good. Stay clear of the Reno Charlie airspace and uh, go <clears throat> westbound. I'm going to touch and go at, at stead here. And then go uh, westbound through this uh, little valley here and up to Stampede Reservoir. Um, there's a tiny island uh, that shows up here uh, at this spot here uh, when uh, the water is low. Uh, so I'm going to land there, and then I'm going to continue the north shore of the reservoir down to a little uh, tiny bay here. I'm going to stop there as well, and continue up this river and over a hill here, and land at this place here. It's The um, placements of these uh, waypoints are just uh, estimations, uh, so disregard those. That's the plan. Full stop in this reservoir or actually uh rather outside of the reservoir uh hopefully at least i'm uh, doing this kind of live so uh whatever you see is whatever you get so uh, if i crash if i ground loop or uh any other uh things well that's part of the uh, part of the plan i guess the reason i'm doing this uh by the way is because he Trent Palmer made this lovely video here, Bush Flying 101. It's uh, from May 2021. One epic day, indeed. So here you see them landing at the second landing spot. Uh, oh, that was bad. So that's part of the uh, production value, I guess. Uh, let's see if I can find that again. That spot is this second one here in uh, the reservoir um, and you can see uh, some of his buddies the, this is actually uh, uh, Juan Brown of uh, Blanco Lirio with, in his husky that's the Freedom Fox and a couple of other guys uh, uh, very very cool video I highly highly recommend it and I will put the link to this video in uh, the description. Um, 
And uh, here's a shot of, uh, so here's Reno. And uh, if I zoom in to the west of Reno, uh, over the border to California, here's Stampede Reservoir. That's the island. That's the first one. I'm going to land it. This little thingy here, this little bay here, is uh, where I'm going to try to land the second one. This is kind of difficult in the beaver because it's uh, it's kind of a tight turn or you have to go over this hill here. So it's, uh, it's a bit of a stretch to do it, but I've done it before. And uh, down here at the southwest end of the um, reservoir, yes, you can you can actually see it in the satellite photo here that people have been uh, fooling around here. So this is where I'm going to land uh, full stop. That's much, much easier. Long place to land. The island is also pretty easy. Uh, it's uh, rather large and you have a nice approach and departure from it. Second one, however, is going to be... Uh, more of a challenge. So um, I'm going to do a quick pre-flight and uh, uh, get the plane going. Right, so pardon the lights going out here. Um, okay, I'm going to pull the flaps down, down, and down. Okay, so the lights behind me are living their own life, so that's good. Okay, master run, just to check, I have fuel, all kinds of fuel. Uh, the center tank is a bit low, so I'm going to start draining the uh, belly tank. I have 15 gallons or so uh, in the belly tank, so I'm going to put that in the center tank on the way to Stead. Uh, what else? Okay, I have the weather at Stead, which is uh, as I said, and uh, altimeter 3034. I'm going to put that here. 6,000, no, 5,800 feet. That's the elevation. And uh, it's pretty cold. The engine is at 5 degrees or so. Okay. Max off, fuel off. Okay, good. So then I can shut that off and do the walk around. I'm gonna put this here so you can see what's going on. Radar altimeter. Not using that very much, but I have it in case I do. Um, let's just verify. Uh, breaker sign. Good. Oil. I, the dipstick of the beaver is actually in uh, um, inside the plane, so you can uh, and also you can refill while flying. So that's very good. Enough oil anyway. Flaps are down. Fuel chocks. I have um, recently put new tundra tires on this one because the uh, old ones were really worn. It was about time. Tie downs. Uh, I'm not going to check the lights. Aileron, it's good. And one of the lovely thing with this beaver is that the uh, flaps are connected to the ailerons. So you, when I wiggle them, you can just barely see that the uh, ailerons are moving. And now what I can do is I can pull the flaps up, and you can see the uh, drooping, or now undrooping. Uh, ailerons. Uh, the reason that they are uh, different now is because uh, the um, the yoke is sitting slightly skewed here. So coming down, flaps, the flap uh, ailerons will droop. Neat little feature that gives uh, a little bit more lift 
but a little bit less uh, aileron control. So that's not too lovely if you need uh, a lot of turning on final. Tie downs, elevator. Good. The all important rudder is free. The rear tire is good. Left flap, left aileron. Good. Okay, well, let's get uh, no fuel in that. That's as expected. Peter cover, tie down, and that's it. All right, close the door. All kinds of uh, stuff in the plane. I have backup bush tires uh, or <clears throat> the main tires in case I blow them. And uh, all kinds of weird stuff in the plane. So it's going to be a heavy plane, but it's got the power for it. So that's no problem. I'm pull the flaps back up again. Like that. Up. Good. And let's get this powered up. Beacon. And I'm going to start with the center tank, which is getting to be empty, but I'm going to start uh, draining from the uh, belly tank. Well, rather, pulling from the belly tank. The belly tank is uh, below uh, here, and uh, it uses the uh, vacuum pump to pump fuel from the belly tank up into the center tank. So let's use the wobble pump to get fuel pressure. 5 psi or so, and the primer, which is down by the floor here, by the door. This is pretty cold. I'm going to take uh, I'm going to take six shots of primes. So that was three, unless I'm mistaken. Four, five. Six, and I'm gonna take one more that I'm gonna leave open so I have it ready when I start the engine. So, uh, prop is clear, and uh, here we go. Clear prop. There we go. In with the primer, oil pressure is uh, reasonably high, but uh, it's, it's very cold, so it'll settle. Um, close that window. All right. Do the control check here. So that goes up, this one goes down, up, down, elevator up and down, and I'm gonna check the rudder while when I uh, do the uh, run up because I cannot see the rudder from here. Actually, I can just see. Do I have a shadow that I can use? I can just barely see. No, I cannot see the uh, shadow of the rudder, but I can feel the rudder when I have a bit more power. Um, now the engine is running nicely. I can put the alternator to it and radio, radio master, avionics master. Put the nav lights on. Uh, I'm not going to be talking on the radio today because I'm not going to be in any airspace that I need to be talking to anyone, but I'm going to monitor NorCal approach uh, to 126.3 because I'm going to be very close to the Charlie airspace of 
of um, of Reno Tahoe. Actually, I'm gonna be within uh, a few feet. Actually, I'm gonna be below it though. So the South 2466, flight heading 040, vectors for the islands, runway 21 approach. Okay, so that's the, uh, that's the uh, approach controller. But I'm gonna cancel that radio now while I'm on the ground. Also monitoring guard on 1 to 1.5. Uh, I'm gonna be actually using uh, the Reno Stead 1 to 2.7. I'm going to be using that when I'm getting in there. So, all right, engine is uh, warming up. It's uh, almost ready for uh, run up. Let's see if I can, if I have enough power to taxi out here. I have enough power, but I do I have enough? Uh, I don't want to over RPM the engine while it's cold. I tend to leave it around thousand. Eh, it's enough for me to start wiggling the plane on the ramp a little bit, but uh, yeah, not enough. So the plan is to uh, to do a few laps around uh, his um, Trent Palmer's uh, ranch airstrip. Um, it's a it's a one way landing for sure. I think it's more or less directly westbound. I can just confirm that on four flat air because I can zoom in on the satellite photo here. Let's see, it's uh, runway two six. I'm gonna set that into the HSI here, so I have some idea of where I'm going. All right. So a few laps around just to um, get a feel for the plane. It has had a supercharger. Um, repaired job, uh, the simulated plane rather, uh, and uh, some adjustments to the carburetor. It's got uh, an interesting uh, type of carburetor, uh, not the one that most people are used to where you have uh, rich and then leaner all the way. It's got that segment here. Um, you can uh, do manual leaning here. But this, it's got an auto rich and auto lean. Uh, 2466, turn 10 degrees left to set maintain 9000. 10 degrees left to set maintain 9000, southwest 2466. Why am I hearing that radio? That's odd. I shouldn't be hearing that radio. Anyway, I'm gonna do that. Set it over to guard for now. What was I saying? Yes, I was talking about the mixture, uh, the uh, carburetor. So it's got um, auto lean and auto rich. So I just tend to leave it in auto rich. I'm Why? I need to do an entire hold. I don't have that much to burn off. But if I could just get vectored out for maybe just like a little bit of a longer final, that'd be perfect. That's so four sixty six. Can you tell me how far do you need? Uh, let's see, maybe. Uh, let's call it uh, between five to eight miles northeast of Lucid. That is peculiar. Why am I hearing approach on guard? I have something wrong with my avionics, I suppose. Yeah, that's just where my higher minimum vectoring altitudes are, so that's why I figured I would uh, need to know how far out you need to go so I can determine can how I get that I fixed get. before I depart here. Uh, I don't want to... Yeah, no worries. I mean, if you can't do that, uh, I can just throw the gear down. That'll burn quite a bit of gas. No, it's possible. Um, 
I've got an, uh, about 7,500 foot minimum vectoring altitude, about uh, 10 miles out from Luce. So I'll put you just inside of that. Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, Southwest 2466. Let's try something here. I'm going to put it to the ATIS for a Reno Tahoe just to see how that works out. 135.8. Reno Tahoe International Air. Okay, so now I got that there. Shouldn't be hearing the uh, control. F uh, I think the radio was stuck on uh, the approach frequency for some reason. Anyway, now the engine is warm enough, so now I can start taxing around here. So sorry for this distraction here. This is, uh, as far as I understand, a one-way in, one-way out airfield. Uh, the terrain is one thing, uh, but it's also uh, slightly uphill towards the west. So I want to depart east, land west. So in with flaps. And I can do a run up. Let's see here. Bags are clear. Let's try check the propeller. That works. Very much. Okay. Um, trim. Set. Flaps are down. Or not down, but they are where they're supposed to be. This departure and uh, engine is starting to creep up. The oil is still in the yellow, but it's uh, it's going to get there. Check for carbides here. Nope, nothing. And I am uh, charging. Yes, and let's get some strobes on landing lights. So everything here is settled. I'm facing east. That checks out. All right, so um, I'm going to do a right turn out towards the south and uh, turn around in the valley, come back on the left base to runway 26 and land. All right, let's depart. No, I'm going to do the rudder check first. So if I turn, if I pull uh, right rudder, the plane should lean to the left. It does and left rudder the opposite. Yeah, perfect. So that works. Now I've probably unlocked my tailwheel, so I'm going to roll slightly forward just to make sure that it's locked. Okay, now I can go. Take the power set, engine green, here's been alive. Nose down. speed here uh, so I can start dropping flaps I can, I can actually do that right now So 
So let's see here. So follow this road here, and around here it's going to be the straight in for uh, the runway, which is up on this hill here. Full flaps set, trim is set, and uh, there's basically no go around, but uh, at least not after I've started touching down. But if the alternative is crashing monstrously into the building, I'll try to avoid, uh, avoid that. So here you have the bend in the road and the runway. Try to creep up to the runway a little bit. Not come too much down, because then I uh, have to flare much more. landing indeed not good but could have been much worse Let's see I can swing my tail around here into the bushes that's fine come on come on come on ah, that's more like it what the uh, tail wheel to unlock uh, no, I'm not sure if I have the uh, guts to do another landing here on camera like that. So I'm gonna go to Stead and uh, head for the reservoir. That's my plan anyway. Uh, so I'm not gonna stay around here. So, uh, trim still set and flaps are set on takeoff. So head for Stead. Take power set, engine green. Speed alive and nips over. Let's stick to the runway all the way to the end here. Oh, nope. stones. And walk the power back here. Now I can monitor approach again. is the CTA for STED. STED traffic, Beaver 524 Alpha is 5 miles north inbound, touch and go runway 26, straight out, you know. You know, STED rather. So where is the airport? I should be flying almost directly for the other, yeah, there it is. So the outer shelf of the Charlie for uh, Reno Tahoe is uh, bottoming out at 7,200. So as long as I'm below 7,200, which is 1,000 feet above where I am now, then I'm good to move around uh, the uh, Stead Airport. Stead traffic, paper 5 for Alpha is on a 3 mile right base, runway 26, touch and go, straight out. Instead. So headed for the uh, for what's on the map charted as a uh, at least uh, seasonally dry lake bed. Uh, seems to be rather wet in the sim here, but uh, maybe 
maybe that's correct. I don't know. So what I'm pla what I'm planning to do afterwards is just fly straight out through this uh, valley here. It should take me straight up to the reservoir. Okay, start slowing down here. And open up that valve to the uh, belly tank, which I had forgotten about. So now I can take the, those 15 gallons from the belly tank up to the, uh, to the center tank. Start traffic, paper 524 Alpha, right base, runway 26, straight, straight out, such a go. Instead. See no traffic there, and uh, yeah, still no traffic on file. Start pulling in some flaps here. Stead traffic, paper 5 to 4 Kappa, turning short final 2 6, touch and go straight out. Stead. Twenty-four sixty-six contact tower one one eight point three. Over to tower D three southwest twenty-four sixty-six today. That was the approach. Oi, downdraft here. Okay, tower southwest twenty-four sixty-six ILS runway two one. That was twenty-four sixty-six Spokane tower wind variable is five runway two one clear land. Clear land runway two one southwest twenty-four sixty-six. That's much better. Stay on the main wheels here. And off we go. Stead traffic, Beaver 5 to 4 Alpha upwind, runway 26, straight out. Stead. Of all the airports in uh, X Plane, I wonder why this one is not very well modeled. It's kind of drab, and it shouldn't be. It's uh, kind of a famous airport, so... Someone should get their act together. I'm not going to be the one. I'm not good at uh, creating big airfields. I can do the small push trips. That's uh, my forte. Yeah, I'm gonna continue straight out here until I get to the uh, dry lake bed near the. Uh, what is this? Highway. What is it? Looks like a very big one. 395, that's what the chart says there. And uh, then I'm gonna continue up the uh, hills. Okay, I can see the. Uh, Center tank is uh, increasing in, uh, in its contents, and uh, the bell tank is decreasing. The uh, yeah, approach November 9 to a Sulu Alpha is at Renton, looking for Alpha clearance to Bremerton. The tanks are empty. November 9 to a Alpha, Seattle departure on request, am I? that uh, dry like bed. And the engine is behaving nicely. It's pretty cold out, so uh, I would wouldn't expect it to uh, to overheat, but Bremerton Airport, Britain three departure, direct radar vector Seattle VOR. Then direct Wumox, then direct. Maintain three thousand. All 
Right, so that's the highway beneath me here. And I'm gonna head up through this valley here. Just on the other side of this little saddle here is uh, the reservoir. So I'm gonna do um, just uh, approach it from up high and uh, kind of circle around it, have a look around, and, uh, and I'm gonna head for the first landing spot, which is the uh, small island. Okay, pull the flaps all the way up. And uh, for those who are watching, you see this uh, kind of uh, bright-ish color of the sand and the uh, the uh, terrain in general, and the more reddish hue over here. Um, two different scenery packs, so uh, basically uh, ortho uh, for XP that I've installed myself is the bright one, and the uh, this one that I'm going to be flying into now is uh, Orbex True Earth. Uh, will be California, I think. Yeah, True Earth California. Um, it's the same. I think it's the same uh, uh, material. It's just much higher resolution. The Orbex uh, one, and uh, they've color corrected it and. Uh, done all kinds of things to it, so it's going to look much better now than what it did previously. Power back a little bit here. So for anyone who were uh, listening now, uh, the uh, frequency um, of the radio uh, that I was listening to, that was uh, the approach to uh, Reno Tahoe. Um, it's uh, an online um, uh, ATC uh, service uh, called Pilot Edge. Probably many are aware of that already. Uh, so you heard some um, repeaters from uh, other approach facilities um, in uh, in the United States, in the western part of the United States. You heard, I think, I heard Spokane approach at some point. That's completely normal. Uh, so they, they have kind of repeaters on the approach frequencies and uh, on the towers and on the ground frequencies and the clearance deliveries and all of that. So you can sometimes hear pilots and uh, other controllers on the same frequency, but it's uh, um, all the frequencies listed in the charts and uh, supplements are uh, in effect. So you can uh, dial up the correct facility and call them and get uh, ATC service. And uh, speaking of ATC, that's one of the things I've uh, noticed in, um, in uh, the videos with uh, Trent Palmer. He says that he's not good at um, radio comms. And um, I was thinking uh, if we could get a simulator and uh, try it out there. It's a good way of practicing and uh, uh, having a look at some of the busier airports if you want to go flying into one of those uh, before actually going in there for uh, for real and you can test out the comms uh, but from the few videos I've seen where he actually flies into busy airspace it, it seems like he's actually quite good at it uh, he probably uh, doesn't have much experience with it but he's not bad at it I've heard much worse So, um, here's Stampede Reservoir. Okay, now I think uh, the transfer of fuel is done. Yeah, the barrel tank is empty. I'm going to do a circle, counterclockwise circle around here, and then head into this 
island in middle here. Not sure if these places have any names. Probably uh, the locals have some uh, names. I think I've heard some, uh, they, they, they mentioned some names. Um, you know, Southwest Beach or something like that. Probably some, uh, um, yeah, some local uh, local knowledge would be good. So, for those who did watch this video beforehand or will watch it afterwards, this is what is they are talking about. They are sitting on this island talking about the plan. He and uh, the, the one guy mentioned that they're gonna fly on the north shore, which is this one. And then there's a left, left turn over the channel and into the landing, the second landing spot, which is here. And he talks about the excellent go around opportunity around here, which is true. And it's gonna be needed. And uh, the third location for landing is up here. It took me quite a while to figure out where these places are, um, because they don't reference any maps, and uh, uh, I don't I don't remember seeing any very wide shots of this uh, area. So I didn't uh, I didn't really understand where they were. But this was the first one, coming into land here, stopping somewhere around here. I think. Or was it here? Yeah, they're landing this way anyway. Yeah, I think I think they actually stopped around uh, this little uh, slightly higher elevation. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I see on the GPS that it records three knots from the north, so that's uh, basically into the wind, but it's not enough wind to be any concern at all. Slightly higher RPM. The, the uh, propeller on this plane is a huge air brake. So they were flying um, huskies and proper cubs and uh, kid foxes into these uh, places. And I'm gonna take this huge lumbering beast of a beaver. So uh, don't expect me to stop as quickly and as gracefully as they do, but you should. Uh, well, you shouldn't expect me to not ground loop either, because that's uh, something that uh, amateur tailwheel pilots can do. But I'm going to try to avoid it. So I'm basically ready to turn f uh, left base here. I did say the wind was from the north. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's died down even further. It's two knots now, so not a factor. Full flaps, high RPM, throttle is at auto rich. Looks like there's some uh, sort of a dam here. Either. 
kinds of rocks out here. Try to avoid those. Let's stop here and pull the flaps up. And uh gonna take the uh uh, the drone, uh, the X-Plane drone camera, and have a look around. This is how this one looks. Not the uh, biggest of uh, international airports, but it's uh, it's good. Uh, this is not something that is um, stuck in X-Plane. Uh, actually, in X-Plane you wouldn't have even see an island here, I think. Uh, this is um, a small... Uh, all these three... Um, Reservoir fields are uh, something I just modeled for my own entertainment after watching that video. I even put the geese here, out here on this little island, just for uh, just for fun. So you have a uh, uh, little family of geese here, and uh, in the distance, a beaver. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to depart the other way and do a left pattern around the island and then follow the north shore over to that little bay over there where I'm going to land. So, flaps. Let's see if I can line up with the uh, so-called runway. Yeah, that looks good. All right, before I start forgetting uh, again, I'm gonna draw from the front tank now because that's full and uh, that's gonna last me uh, one and a half hour. I'm not gonna be flying for one and a half hour now, but then I can set it and forget it. Okay, let's check that I have power. Okay. Yep. I love this plane so much. Engine green, there's a bit alive. Nose coming down so I can see where I'm going. Oh, those rocks, I'm gonna avoid those. And up. Avoid the geese. I'm gonna climb a little bit more. altitude I don't want to do two steep turns uh, when I'm uh, pulling the flaps up so I suddenly we'll have this uh, accelerated stall I don't want to have that so that's the uh, north shore you can follow that I'm gonna actually just power back quite a bit and just leave the climb flaps in because I'm gonna need to dump them very soon So that bay over there is where I'm going to land. I'm going to take some intro instrument lights here. GPS says of the wind now. It's screaming terrain alerts to me all the time, so it's basically useless. Three knots from the north. Okay, so the wind is no factor. Um, in any case, it's easier for me to come in from this side and crossing over the channel and going in rather than going around. Um, not to say that it's easy, but it's less difficult. So I'm going to try to 
slow down a hell of a lot here now. Try to hug the trees and then pull it over the channel. Um, the land as early as possible. Those guys and the huskies and the uh, kid foxes, they were able to stop in uh, just a few hundred feet. I need slightly more than that. Maybe five, six hundred feet, maybe more. They said in the video that this is uh, a thousand feet or so, but uh, I'm not going to be able to use all of it because uh, of my approach angle. Actually, it's not going to work with this turn, it's going to be too steep. I want to try to land up here if possible. So I'm going to come slightly over here. Careful with this turn here, with this slow speed. Be coordinated. So now I can start slowing down here. Yeah, this uh, this looks presentable, though the angle is uh, slightly off. Could have done it, but it's uh, too uh, too close. And I, I also want to make use of that go round opportunity. It's kind of kind of a good looking uh, go around, in a way. I'm going to try to be more aggressive with the uh, slowing down when I'm coming across the channel there. power when I was somewhere over the, uh, the north uh, beach there, so I'm going to try to cut it a little bit more close to the trees there, once I kind of made the turn. One of my problems was also the fact that I um, my turn was uh, uh, too shallow, if that's a word, uh, but it, I didn't get around fast enough, so I had to correct when I got back. So I'm going to try to Unload the wing a little bit more, and then uh, do a steeper turn here. Still coordinated. Yeah, cutting the power now. This is going to be better. Yeah, much betterness. Not much better, but uh, hey, looks worse than it is. Screaming brakes. Let's have a look around. It's funny because uh, the last few times I actually landed here, I stopped way, way earlier than I did now. Uh, I think I stopped... Uh, yeah, I stopped before this uh, this little green patch here, this little brook or whatever it is. I think I was able to stop within this uh, area here. But anyway, it's, uh, it's dry all the way around here, so it's not a big factor, but it's uh, kind of annoying. But I did land very much out here somewhere, so. Uh, anyway, so now, and uh, I'm just gonna pull up the uh, map again, so that I can uh, have a summary of what I'm uh, what I'm doing now. Just landed on that island, did the north shore, over to this little uh, bay here, did the go around, came back, landed. So now I'm gonna depart straight out from where where I am now. Turn left, follow this river, or climb, and try and intercept this river here, and find uh, this landing spot over here. That's the plan. So, take a flap set, trim set. OK, 
Okay, I could feel that the uh, tail wheel was not locked, so I, we're gonna roll a little bit first. Yeah, now it's locked. And uh, I'm not taking off directly into the water now. Nope, that's good. Take off power. Full power, rather. Set. Need a green airspeed alive. And nose. the wing immediately to start to accelerate. Beautiful. See the wind calm down a little bit because the uh, the water turned to glass. Okay, walking the power back. A bit flaps up here. I think my landing spot is uh, just over the hill here, uh, but I'm gonna fly slightly around this little hill here, uh, just so I can have a long approach. With this kind of flying, my uh, GPS is just doing uh, terrain alerts and uh, terrain advisory uh, all the time. Okay, coming up on that crossing road on the uh, west end of that uh, runway, or your landing strip. Yeah, that's the road there, down there. Gonna turn to the south here and start slowing down. I should be seeing, perhaps, that little river going into the, uh, to where I'm going. Probably just in uh, that valley coming up. This is probably an unnecessary long final for this uh, airstrip, but it's uh, doing it also for the scenic, for scenic reasons. You can see the landing spot down there. Landing flap set, propeller full forward. Trim is set. Now, I cannot see the river, but it's down in this uh, valley beneath me here. Approach that open spot there, and fly low through that, and then turn right. I'm gonna fly through here and turn right here. Could come over the trees as well, but uh, I think this is gonna be fun. As long as I don't stall in the turn. people came here before me. That's nice. Last time I landed here I s actually slid all the way out to the uh, to the edge of where uh, the uh, ground starts getting wet. 
That was not very uh, fun. I think that was due to uh, War's approach and the tires being slightly worn. So, here's my final resting place. I'm gonna line it up next to the uh, zenith. If that's what it is, I think that's what it is. It's also uh, one of those home built planes, I think. And I'm gonna set the parking brake off with the strobes and lighting lights, and there we go. Little fly in. So, what do we have here? We have Piper Cub, we have a, uh, um, a Husky, and uh, looks like a Cessna, and that uh, Zenith that I talked about, and of course, the Beaver. So, you might want to ask where is the uh, Kit Fox? that Trent Palmer is flying. Well, I don't have... Uh, well, I also created this airport, as I said, so I I couldn't find any um, Kit Fox in the uh, object library, so I don't have that. So the Freedom Fox is relegated to, to being a fox in the freedom of uh, the uh, bush that this is. So this is indeed bush flying. So uh, with that I'm gonna uh, start shutting down the uh, plane and um, go have a meal. Perhaps a fox burger. No, I'm kidding. Or am I? Flaps up. And uh, one of the big things I love about this plane is just listen to this. Up with the radio. Now who's gonna not love a sound like that? Too gorgeous. Alternator, nav, uh, beacon, mags off, fuel off, and master off. And I can do that. And Post flight. Actually, I'm gonna just set chocks. I'm not gonna tie it down. Actually, probably I should end with a uh, reservoir in the background. Like that. So, thanks for watching, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And, um, uh, Go out and enjoy the bush. Uh, there's uh, quite a bit of freedom in the United States to go uh, to do that. And uh, actually, Trent Palmer posted a video uh, not that long ago uh, discussing some of the uh, legality and uh, things behind this. And it's um, surprisingly very, very uh, liberal in that sense. Just, just need to know where you uh, should go. Um, and also be careful not to uh, to mess up the terrain and uh, leave trash behind and uh, scare wildlife, geese and foxes and all of that. At least too, not too much. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, good night and uh, good luck.